What's up everybody, welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. We're gonna do a little story time while it's fresh in my memory. I just got back from Dallas from the, uh, the FitCon event. Amazing event. We haven't had a story time in a while. And while this is <laughs> stuck in my head, we're gonna have, there's multiple pieces to this story time, so bear with me. So I get to Dallas, I go to the meet and greet. I was gonna train at the meet and greet, which was like 12 o'clock noon time at destination. And I get there and it's so fucking packed that you can't even train. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to fucking train here. I haven't really slept. It was a fucking late night, early morning bullshit, whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go check in the hotel. Take a nap. Yes, I take naps. And then I'm going to go train somewhere near the hotel. So I go take a nap. I get up and I hit the Around Me app on my phone. And the Gold's Gym pops up. So I said, okay, Gold's Gym. All right, so I'll go down there. So I, you know, map it out on the phone do the GPS thing, I go to Gold's Gym. So I'm training Gold's Gym now, the whole 5% crew, Rich, um, you know, Sarah, John, Katie, Zach, we're all meeting up later to have dinner at, um, you know, it was kind of like an undecided place, but John's from the area, John Kirby, so he knows the place. So he says, yeah, we'll go to this place, whatever. Okay, cool. So I get a text um, while I'm at the gym, change of plans, we're gonna go here to this place, you gotta dress up, wear jeans. Now I'm like, I don't fucking have jeans. I came here for two days. It's Texas. So I figured it's going to be like fucking 100 degrees. All I have are fucking tank tops. I think I have a Love It Kill It t-shirt, two tank tops, a couple jerseys, uh, you know, like the Love It Kill It jerseys, fucking sneakers, and that's my ball cap. Like, that's, that's all I have. Like, fuck. So I don't even have jeans to wear. Or a fucking shirt. It's like, fuck. So now I start, like, you know, hitting things in the area, and, like, things are too far away, and I got, like, a half hour to get to the restaurant. Right next to the fucking, uh, um, the Gold's Gym is a Marshall's. So I'm like, all right, I'll just go buy a pair of jeans and a fucking t-shirt and we'll call it a day. I have, you know, my Louis Vuitton fucking shoes on, my sneakers on. So they'll go with fucking whatever, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're not really dressed either, but they're not really, like, athletic. So I go buy a pair of fucking jeans, a shirt, and I meet, I head to the, the, the restaurant, which was Del Frisco's Steakhouse. So I get there. And I, I was the first one to arrive. I walk in, they're like, oh, you're the first one here for the parties, you know, the piano party. Just kind of sit over here and we'll, you know, they brought me a Diet Coke, whatever. So the next two arrive are Katie Slaughter and Zach. And they walk in the door wearing fucking shorts and their fucking Love It Kill It hoodies. And I'm like, wait a minute, we have to dress up. And they're like, nobody told us. I'm like, what the fuck? I said, well, I wonder if they're going to kick them out. What the fuck? They're wearing, you know. Then Rich walks in wearing fucking shorts and a Love It Kill It shirt, and John walks in wearing jeans and a fucking shirt. So I'm like, John, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, you know, it's a dress thing, but right before we left, you know, Rich called and he said, it's okay if you can wear shorts and a t-shirt. I'm like, but I just went to buy a fucking pair of jeans and a t-shirt to wear here. <laughs> so me and John were the only ones wearing jeans and everybody else. Well, I think Mike, um, who was John's business partner, um, was also wearing jeans and a shirt, but everybody else was wearing their Love It Kill It shirt, which would have been much more comfortable when I had to buy shit. So, now, that's just a, part, a little part of the story. Now, the second part of the story is I'm sitting next to Zach and Katie, and across from Katie is Rich and um, Sarah. So, and these are we're all these are the five percenters. You know all these people. And uh, Rich is like, all right, take a picture of us for, you know, we can post it online. So, Katie takes the phone and goes, one, two. Takes two snapshots, right, boom, boom. Like, one, two, just like that. So, Rich starts flipping through the things, and he notices something weird behind him. And he goes, what the fuck is that? And he looks, he's like an exit door. And you can see the exit door. There was no people standing behind him. Nobody came through the door. He's like, what the fuck is that thing behind me? Like, a, It's like a shape of a person, but it's like smoke. There's no smoking in there. The lighting is fine. He's like, what the fuck is it? So jokingly, he goes, it's a ghost. So he starts showing it to all of us. He's like, look, these pictures, it's not in this picture, but it's in the next one. Those are taken less than a second apart. And then it, dis it, it just disappears. So it's in the first one, not in the second one. Like, it disappears. It, it, it can't be somebody that walked behind him. It's just very strange looking. So we're laughing. And at the end of the meal, we asked the waiter if anybody died. Or I asked the waiter because, fucking, I get a big mouth. I said, did anybody ever die in the restaurant? And he said, yes, somebody has died in the restaurant. I was like, what the fuck? So now I'm like, is there a ghost in the restaurant? Like, I asked him. He's like, ah, no, no, I don't, I don't think so. Who knows? Maybe, whatever. So we go outside to the front, all of us. And we're going to take a group shot, like, at the end of the night. And one of the valets, we give him the camera. He said, can you take a picture of us? And he says, you know, we're talking about the ghost. And he said, yeah, I, there's rumors that there's a ghost in the fucking restaurant. 
Like, he didn't even know that we had talked to the other guy that we had taken the picture. And he was like, yeah, the rumor has it that there is a ghost in there. And we're like, holy fuck, we got, it on, we, got a, we got a picture of it. So, in all essence, we got a picture of the ghost of Del Frisco. <laughs> which is kind of fucked up. And all of us are just kind of like, what the fuck? So the weekend, you know, you know it, it just had some really cool things happening. The next part was the fucking tornado warning. So I'm sitting in, um, it started the downpour. And I jokingly said, you know, the day before, we're going to get a tornado. And somebody said, well, maybe tomorrow we get some bad weather coming. I was like, get the fuck out of here. So Katie and Zach decided it would be funny to text me and say, don't look at the TV, which I had already had turned on. And all of a sudden the warning thing came on. Tornado watch. I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. It eventually turned into a tornado warning, and there were a few tornadoes that touched down in the area in Irving that I was staying at. Um, pretty freaky. Pretty freaky thing for me because I'm not a fucking tornado guy. I'm a snow guy. I came from fucking New England. You know, I'm a thunderstorm kind of guy, but I'm not a fucking tornado guy. So we were on tornado watch till I was like 3 o'clock in the morning, and then I finally fucking fell asleep. By the time I got back to the hotel, fell asleep, it was uh, yeah, about 3 o'clock in the morning or so. And the final piece of story time for this weekend. <sighs> so Rich, uh, Rich's friends, uh, maybe it was Sarah. Sarah's friend, um, Tina, who she hadn't seen in a while, her and her boyfriend Ambrose were coming to meet us at Upper Crust. And they were late. All of us had eaten. We were just hanging out and stuff. And they come in. And Ambrose says, sorry we're late, but I ran a lady over with my car. And we were like, what are you, ta <laughs> what are you talking about? So he said, and he has a Porsche. He was driving, it was raining downpour, and a drunken lady dressed in all black, okay, steps off a curb and walks straight in the street, and he fucking nails her. She goes up in the air, fucking nails his windshield, and breaks his fucking windshield, then hits the ground. Now, he just realizes that he hit something, and he goes, I think it was a person. He's like, I didn't even see it because she was dressed in all black. So he goes out there, and she's laying on the fucking ground, like, just all fucking sprawled out, and he's like, oh, my God, are you Okay. She's like, what happened? She didn't know what the fuck was going on. So he tries to help her up, and her fucking hair was stuck under the tire, under his tire. He had to get back in the car, back the car up, and then fucking get her off the ground. She cut her head and um, was extremely intoxicated. Like, she is just all fucked up. She didn't even know she'd been hit by a car. She had no concept of what happened. And, um, you know, the ambulance came, the police came, they checked her out and stuff. She refused medical treatment, which she get hit by a fucking car. I mean, eventually... You could wake up in the morning and be a complete fucking mess. Like whiplash, concussion, who the fuck knows. But being drunk, when you're drunk and you fall or you get hit in an accident, like you go limp. So you're more or less likely to get injured in a, in a case like that. But, you know, so here we are. We got, you know, the, the ghosts. Me buying the clothes, which is not really a fucking big deal. But it was still a pain in my fucking ass to try to find something. Oh, and here's the, kill, here's the kicker with those jeans that I had to buy. Nothing in Marshall's had like a straight leg fit or a baggy fit. I wore fucking skinny jeans. Yeah. Skin, skinny jeans. They weren't super skinny, but they were skinny enough to wear my fucking legs. And I don't even have big legs. We're fucking tightening them. My balls are up in my fucking throat. To dinner. And then ghosts. Fucking tornadoes. And running people over with cars. That's what the weekend entailed. You can't write this shit better for a script. But this was fucking real life. And it was amazing, you know, I'm, I had a great time, and I'm glad that, uh, I'm really glad that, that I went. This was awesome. So, that's story time for this time. Biohazardtraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below. Let me know what you think about all this shit. www.biohazardtraining.com is a blog. You can't write it any better, bicep, and we're out.